Hey guys, last year we looked at an ordinary resin printer with a spectacularly low retail price. The Elegu Mars was a really popular printer that ended up being sold out everywhere for a while. And deservedly so. If what they are telling me is true, then we may have another such banger of a product today. This is the successor, the Elegu Saturn. A 4K masked SLA machine with a much larger build volume and again a very competitive price. Masked SLA has nothing to do with the oh so popular face masks that took the world by storm in early 2020. It's all about that masking liquid crystal display for which others like to call these guys LCD printers. They are the cheapest kind in the resin curing category. The more expensive laser SLA machines produce smoother surfaces. At the cost of being much slower and having to compensate for distortion in software or with an expensive lens. For the mostly technical applications that I'm interested in, I don't need smoother surfaces than those that a high resolution LCD can give me. And the only sources of distortion that we are going to experience with this one are going to be the unavoidable material shrinkage and the movement involved in layer changes. That's why masked SLA is my personal favorite at the moment, probably until Micromirror DLP becomes available. Damn, are those genuine high wind rails? Probably not, because there's no laser engraving, but they do look nice, gotta give them that. This chonka weighs 15 kg by the way, I'll show you in a moment why. Before printing there's only one thing you've gotta do, level the build platform. With this lockable ball joint and the included piece of cardboard that's super easy. The Z-axis home position is detected with a photoelectric fork sensor and confirmed with a loud buzzer. For maximum parallelity I'm pressing down gently on the platform while tightening the screws. That's supposed to be all the preparation that the Saturn will normally need. I could imagine that these first few preview units may have departed from the manufacturer in a bit of a rush. And maybe that's why mine needed an extra step in preparation. It was missing its central string of UV LEDs. Because one of the power LED drivers apparently unplugged itself during shipping. Manufacturer states that it is known and they are working on having that fixed in all retail units. I'm fixing that myself, the authentic way. Hmm, I wonder if you can tan patterns on your face with one of these bad boys. Anyways, now we can start pouring in some juice. Ideally without my harsh video lights curing this stuff halfway between bottle and vet. Like practically all other consumer grade MSLA machines, this thing is based on CBD hardware. They are developing the driver boards for the masking LCDs in all any cubics, crealities, flash forges and so forth. As well as a very good slicer software for all of them. It's updated often, but at the time I'm making this video, it doesn't know about the final parameters of the Illegoo Saturn yet. So I'm just entering the new parameters from the manual, manually. The resolution in combination with the build volume are adding up to just above 500 dpi. That's a big deal, far beyond the competition in this price class. And there is yet another surprise here. The exposure time that they are suggesting is much, much lower than that of previous comparable machines. They are not using face melting four times more powerful illumination to accomplish this. They've just equipped an LCD panel without the useless and inefficient color filter layer. That monochromatic display seems to make a huge difference in print time energy efficiency and LCD longevity. Absolutely beautiful innovation, I hope. Well then, let's finally go ahead and print some of the usual test pieces. Personally, I'm a big fan of the cling film look. 
In day-to-day -day operation I'm going to put stuff on the hood and handle it often with greasy fingerprints or worse, resiny fingerprints. I think when I did my job of making the thing look good on video, I'm going to re-wrap it and preserve that new look a little longer. While that's working I'm going to let you in on a little not so secret. I've actually been working with a similar printer for a few months now. It's been living in here for stench and noise containment. The manufacturer has sent over an earlier, early version back in March. Same build volume, similar mechanics, but a not so special 2K masking LCD. Because this video release is a bit rushed, I'd say we'll use the old one for teardown purposes, while the new one is still pumping out parts. I like the mechanical design of this printer a lot. The Z-axis lead screw is only a trapezoidal one, going into a low maintenance plastic nut. The resulting unloaded repeatability is nearly perfect, and that's what matters. Under load there is a lot of axial play because they are not using an angular contact ball bearing or anything. They are just putting all the load on the stepper motor shaft, and that's usually only supported by a wave spring washer. That works okay in this case because all the forces that this axis is going to experience in normal operation are the separation forces that occur when a freshly cured layer is peeled from the vet. Afterwards the build platform travels a few millimeters and then slowly dunks back into the low viscosity resin, almost unloaded. Here's one of the reasons why these guys are so much more heavy than they look. They are using their linear rails almost ideally by bolting them to this massive machined aluminium profile. Thing is, the purpose of linear rails is to ensure that the carriage moves only in parallel to a datum line to which they are bolted. Their primary purpose is not to be flat or straight. When bolted to an extruded aluminium profile they inherit all imperfections. That's perfectly acceptable for 3D printers in my opinion, but it's beautiful to see that the guys at Elegu get it and do it better. The 100% correct way would be to squeeze them sideways as well, with bolts or needle bearings. But a tight fitting slot like this is plenty good for 3D printers. The black tape around the LCD prevents light from leaking out and spilled resin and other beverages from leaking in. Ignorantly I removed some of it and then replaced it with copper tape, that's why it's looking a bit inconsistent here. Wow, what an absolutely massive light source. Looks like this older version had only one driver board, supplying two strings of LEDs. Did I say something about not face melting earlier? Well I'm taking no risks, this thing is helping itself to 36 watt. Letting that go without cooling for too long, I'm sure to leave some of my fingerprints on the heatsink. I would say the rest in here is predictable. G2 controller based on an STM32 F407 and an N-Logic FPGA as LCD driver. The newer printer will have the next iteration but the same architecture. Let's see what the new printer has been up to. As always the resin printing process depends on many parameters being correct. And a change in hardware, resin and maybe even model can require adjustments everywhere. Since I only just received the new 4K model three days before the release date of this video, I don't think I've dialed in my process perfectly yet. But I can already say that the results on small parts are above and beyond. What benefits the most from the high resolution are round natural shapes. They end up with an almost ground glassware kind of look. Flat geometric shapes like the walls are the only places where pixels are visible to the naked eye. But there is actually an anti-aliasing function in the slicer to hide those lines if they are unwanted. Their mind-blowing two second exposure time also worked perfectly, but only for the small Benji on the side. 
Not sure precisely what caused this fail, but their recommended 70mm per minute lifting speed is pretty brutal. So far, for highest chances of success, I used to go with something as gentle as 10mm per minute. I'm not sure why they are calling this a torture piece, in my opinion that's the opposite. Small layer cross sections and no huge overhangs, that's guaranteed success. This was a torture piece, let me tell you. Just like all big geometric objects. What makes these so difficult are different states of shrinkage in the same piece and separation forces hanging on that long, soft support material. This is a bench multimeter front panel I printed for a friend. He's going to do something with that on his YouTube channel. Click the info card above if you want to know what. Not quite as big, but similarly difficult. I printed handles for my Fluke multifunction calibrator. They came out perfect. Who doesn't like pea colored handles? I can even choose if I want dehydrated or healthy pea with the amount of post curing sunlight I'm giving them. I'm told this is an unfortunate property of all uncolored resins. As always, to print bigger parts successfully, it's important to find a healthy balance between minimal layer cross section and minimal support length. This extreme example would probably fail because all of this area would stick to the vat like crazy. This extreme example would probably come out distorted, if at all, because such long support material has little strength. This seemingly good balance is a trap. With a bit of luck it might work, but ideally this corner should have a rear opening. Otherwise it will behave like a suction cup and adhere to the vat at least as strongly as solid material. But back to smaller parts where none of it really matters. I got a bit of an unexpected result from the calibration cube. The z-axis that was calibrated with a piece of cardboard turned out to be better than the y-axis. That one was only 0.15mm off, so also pretty good. Printing small threads has been kind of my benchmark for SLA printers. Laser SLA machines are good with surfaces, I'll give them that. But microscopic features like working M3, M2.5 and M2 threads, I'd like to see them try. I made two of these to compare the normal voxel results and the results that have been smoothed over by anti-aliasing. But I forgot to mark which one is which. I think this one's normal and I'm going to use anti-aliasing because that's 0.1% smoother. M3 in any orientation? Absolutely not a problem. I already did that a year ago with Ilegu Mars. We are looking at 50 by 50 by 50 micrometer voxels. The layer height could be adjusted to even lower values, but I haven't tried that yet. I'm surprised how easy horizontal M2.5 is. Vertical is going to be even more easy, so we can just skip that. M2 threads printed vertically. I didn't think we would get here in one piece. But this one is pretty tight, so maybe. Nope, that goes in as well. Crazy. I'm adding a drop of WD-40. That should also be an interesting visual effect. Nuts down to M2.5 also worked flawlessly. An M2 nut, however, ended up breaking the printed threads. But that's okay, we've got to leave something to achieve with the next generation of insanely high resolution printers anyway. Alright, that's it. Check out the link below if you want an Elegoo Saturn. It's a fantastic printer. The upside down SLA concept that it is based on is only fantastic for small parts in my opinion. So the larger build volume is ideally suited for printing multiple small parts at the same time. For bigger parts I would wait for the Elegu Polyjet. I totally just made that up, but who knows, this company just keeps surprising.